In late April, I managed to pull off the best stretch of storm chasing of my 10 year career. That's what it's all about right there. To put the whole story into context, we have to go back a bit. All winter, I had been itching to see some storms. The early season was off to a hot start while I was stuck half a continent away. By April, I was poring over the weather models daily, looking for the signs of an opportunity to gamble the venture west. Finally, I saw what I was looking for. A zonal flow pattern was establishing itself over the southern high plains, followed by a large trough ejection that synoptically screamed tornado outbreak. This was the signal to put the plan into motion, getting the gear and car ready for a 1500 mile journey west for the Southern Great Plains. Day number one would have me sprinting across Kansas for supercells in the Texas Panhandle. While I didn't expect tornadoes, shear profiles looked great for epic storm structure, which did not disappoint. Uh, but it's starting to structure out a bit, so I think we're gonna take the opportunity to get behind it. Now that's what it's all about right there. After a kind of a weird chasing day, I mean, come on. What an incredible storm. Wow. The next morning found me in Amarillo, where an outflow boundary and dry line were positioned perfectly to support the first serious tornado setup of the trip. Silverton, Texas looked to be the go here stupid target. After waiting on the side of the road for an hour, the storm seemed to be reaching maturity. Okay, folks, we might be uh, onto something here. We might be onto something. Oh, let's go. This beautiful tornado was also rather unique, being an anti-cyclonic tornado, spinning clockwise instead of counterclockwise. I didn't soak this fact in at the moment, as I knew this was only the appetizer. I think I've come down from the uh, high of that tornado. The storm's starting to cycle, so. As the storm cycled, I was faced with a choice. Road options were becoming increasingly limited as the storm left the Cap Rock into the mouth of the Paladero Canyon. I could either gamble on the sparse roads to the east or leave the storm temporarily and blast south for the more reliable road network. I made the calculated choice to plunge south. However, it wasn't long after that when I thought I had made the wrong choice. Radar indicated tornado warning. Hail at five inches. <laughs> Five inch hailstones? We're talking grapefruits. Hey, what's up? Hey, um, got a report. Uh, tornado progress seems like chronicle being large. Okay. Just to my north, my friends Kelton Henderson and Chris Risky had a front row seat. Wow, it's, it's ripping in there. I found a road on the edge of the escarpment that would get me as close as possible to the beastly tornado. Yeah, this, this whole thing's churning. Oh my gosh, what a monster storm. I see it. Wow. You see it, Connor? Yep, I'm seeing it. This is a big-time tornado. Massive tornado. If anything, it's going to turn left. Or it's going to turn to its left. Yeah, it's clo road's closed here. You yeah, obviously have to be all right. Yep. Yeah, it's in there. You can see it. It's in right in there. It's hidden behind that wall of rain right there. I kind of just caught like a couple edges of it for like a couple of seconds on the when I pulled up to the fence. 
I'm gonna drop south. Fortunately for nearby Matador, a town no stranger to violent tornadoes, it would remain over open country, roping out shortly after my encounter. This storm continued into the night, but I was already starting to shift focus for the following day. Time now is 3.41 p.m. Central Daylight Time. We're approaching a storm that is currently west of Amherst, Texas, and we'll see what this has going for it here. Definitely looks like we're getting more rising motion on the north edge of that wall cloud. That's promising. This thing might be getting ready for go time here in the next couple of minutes. Oh boy, we're getting uh We're getting toward Genesis, folks. Oh, we're getting some forts. Look at that, folks. Beautiful tornado underway. We might have to move here in a second. It does look like it's coming towards us, but we're gonna watch the foreground here, watching the power lines. I think we're good. It looks like it's moving a little bit to our right here, so I think we're good. Another noodle! Wow. Look at that guy. <laughs> yeah, it's getting a little close. Yeah, we're starting to get some more eddies. As mergers continued to feed the parent supercell, it quickly became a high precipitation monster, sucking in Texas dust as it marched southeast. I would stay in front of it to bask in its might. This storm would continue to cycle into the evening hours, but tornadoes were no longer in the cards. It was on to the next chase. The 26th of April took chasers further west into the great state of New Mexico. I've had good success in this state and wanted to continue the trip's hot streak. Unfortunately, poor decision making brought me much further north from where the main show would end up being. Storm chaser and photographer Thomas Nepshield had a much better time near the city of Roswell. Not all was lost for me though, as I was able to get a head start on positioning for the go bigger go home day in the central high plains. Three areas of interest took shape, all of which just far enough apart to require the day's commitment. To the south, Texas looked like it could put on a show once again. In the middle, a dry line play in Kansas looked extremely promising. However, these two targets had stubborn capping, potentially keeping a lid on any storms from firing. Finally, to the north was western Nebraska, by far the most promising for storms, but were over the sand hills, one of the most difficult chasing terrains in all of the Great Plains. My plan was simple. Wait in northwestern Kansas to see how it materializes. At the first sign of problems, head north into Nebraska for the northern threat. I'd position in Atwood, Kansas along the Nebraska border for storm development. As cumulus burned away into blue sky in the late afternoon, I knew it was time to head north. Shortly thereafter, a tornado watch was issued for Nebraska, with one storm in particular becoming dominant. Connor called and told me to head north fast. This storm was about to get serious. As I winded north through the sandhills, storm chaser Ryan Scholl was in position with an incredible tornado on the ground. Oh my god. Limited road options around Hyannis gave me two options. One was to head west while the other was north. I'm gonna keep creeping north here. Let's see if playing the long game paid off or will pay off. Oh, there's a big body of water up here. This might be perfect. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. We got the spot. Behind this wall of rain was a massive wedge tornado. 
but I was now in perfect position for the next cycle of the storm. That's where the existing storm is, and that's going to occlude north into the storm here. This is what I'm watching now. This base is going to start wrapping up. We might be getting up. Okay. All right, here we go, folks. Tornado developing right in front of us. Here we go. Tornado on the ground. Let's go. Look at that, guys. Beautiful. Beautiful tornado. Wow, what a pretty tornado. Look at that guys, that's what it's all about right there. Nice, beautiful rope tornado. That was a tornado. As night began to fall into place, I started scouting ahead for a time-lapsing location. Something told me that this storm still had something to show, and boy, did it put one on. April 28th was supposed to be the big day, driving a 4 out of 5 risk from the Storm Prediction Center. So many of my chaser friends convened in northern Iowa, but fortunately for the locals, storms did not reach their potential. I concluded my first westward trip of the season after that, a trip that resulted in the best stretch of my 10 years of chasing. Sure, I could have seen more if it weren't for some mistakes, but where's the fun if it weren't a challenge? The storm season is now well underway, and to kick off the peak month of May, Texas decided once again to put on a show for storm chasers like Kirk Giglio. See you again soon, Great Plains. The Moriarty boys are coming back.